Hi YouTube, welcome to my YouTube channel Easy Concepts. Today I'm going to start with the basics. So I'm going to cover all these terminologies like JDK, JRE, JVM and JIT or you can say JIT. Uh, which can be quite confusing for beginners of this language, especially students. So we are going to see this and we are also going to learn how is Java platform independent. So stay tuned. If you look at this image, it is self-explanatory. So if you remember this, you will probably never forget or get confused among all these terminologies. JDK stands for Java Development Kit. It can be seen as a superset of JRE plus development tools like compiler, debugger, Java application launcher, etc. It is the development kit which helps you write a Java program a .java file. Debugger reports bugs in your program and the compiler Java C converts the source code into the byte code. So in the end you get a .class file from your .java file. Just as JDK is a superset of JRE, JRE is a superset of JVM. It includes JVM, Java Virtual Machine, plus package classes like util, math, lang, etc. and runtime libraries. Java command starts a Java application by starting JRE, loading its specified classes and calling its main method. JRE is an environment. It is JVM which actually executes your code and convert your code into a machine language or native language. Uh, it means your dot class file is converted into a machine language. So we have seen that JVM is a subset of JRE, JRE is a subset of JDK and JDK includes everything. So but when we talk about writing a computer program or here Java program, uh, we are more interested in development kit because it has all the things we need to write a computer or Java program and compile it. If you only require to execute a program, you don't need JDK. You can do with JRE because JRE can run a program. Now JIT stands for Just In Time Compiler. JIT is an integral part of JVM and it is activated by default when Java method is called. Just In Time Compiler compiles bytecode into machine code. JVM's default behavior is to execute bytecode using Just In Time Compiler, but it is it can be that it is disabled or its environment variables are not set for some reason. So in that case, JVM uses interpreter. Now the problem with interpreter is that it executes the code line by line. That is it executes the byte code line by line. And this uh, makes the execution slower. Just in time compiler uses sophisticated algorithm and translate a block of code and it also does caching of previously compiled code. So the next time a method is called, it can be called directly without the need to recompile it. This improves the overall performance of JVM. So this was about JDK, JRE, JVM and just-in-time compiler. So let's move on to uh, the next topic. How is Java platform independent? Normally, a compiler converts the source code or the code which you have written into native or machine code. Now this machine code is platform dependent. It is specific for the particular platform on which it was compiled and it will not run on any other platform. But in Java, the Java C compiler converts your source code into bytecode. And this bytecode is an intermediate language, just like we have Microsoft intermediate language in .NET or C Sharp. So the source code, which was your .java file, is converted to .class file, which contains bytecode. And this bytecode is not platform dependent. So this bytecode can be run on any machine. Now, uh, this bytecode is taken and converted into native or machine-specific code on uh, the particular machine on which it is run and for that you just need a machine specific JVM. 
So this makes the once compiled Java program to be run on any platform without recompiling. So this conversion of source code into byte code instead of native or machine code makes Java a platform independent language. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching.